welcome back to my channel i hope that you're doing well welcome to another video and welcome back to an unhaul video i have not done one of these in quite some time but it needs to happen i have a lot of books here to talk about today i don't know how many but i'm thinking close to 30 or 40 so it's going to be a long one i'm going to try to keep my discussion on the books brief um a lot of these i have not read some of these i have and i will tell you the reason why i'm getting rid of them if i have read them but other than that It'll be a pretty quick video, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the section of books that I'm getting rid of because I'm no longer interested in rereading them. Um, I purchased a lot of books right when I started my booktube channel, like thinking, I want to reread all of these books from my childhood. I think it would be fun to see if they stand the test of time, blah, blah, blah. And now that I'm just looking at my reading taste and what I like to read, I don't think I'm ever going to go back to these ones, so I'm going to get rid of them. The first series is the Perfect Chemistry series by um, Simone Eccles. The first one is Perfect Chemistry. I think the second one is Chain Reaction, and then the third one is, oh wait, no, Rules of Attraction and then Chain Reaction. I read these when I was in high school. Um, I don't think that these will stand, stand the test of time. However, I bought them because there's certain scenes of this book that I remember very, very vividly. One of them has to do with like a the char one of the characters under a tree, and I don't know, just some of the things that were in this book I remember so freaking well but I just don't think that I'm ever gonna actually get around to these. I have learned about myself in the last probably year of my reading taste that I just don't tend to be gravitated towards YA contemporary anymore. Um, and so I am just hoping to have my shelves look a little bit more like the things that I like to read. The next series is a big one and that is the House of Night series by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. I have read the first two books in the series and I was wholly content on continuing my reread even though I knew that they weren't written the best and some of the language in these books were not okay but I ended up picking up the third one a few months back which is Chosen and it was just so off-putting that I ended up DNFing it and obviously I'm not going to move on with the rest of the series. It's a 12 book series. I read two, DNF'd one, and decided to get rid of the rest. And the last series that I don't plan on rereading is the um, Divergent series by Veronica Roth. I did read the first one. I already unhauled it which is why it's not here but I had always planned on going back and rereading the rest of the series. I just don't think I'm interested anymore. I had started my reread, I think, mm, like mm, April or May of 2020, and I have not had an inkling to pick up this series again since then. So I think that's just a sign that I don't really want to read it that bad. And if I do, I can always pick them up on audiobook. I don't have to have them physically. So I'm going to get these ones off my shelves. All right, up next, I'm going to talk about the ones I have not read. A few of them are by actually by the same author, but um, I'm getting rid of them because I just don't see myself reading them for any particular reason. Uh, the first one is by, Sil these ones are all by Sylvia Day. These are all set in like a historical setting, it's historical romance, not my vibe, not something that I'm even remotely interested in, even though these are erotica, um, that have, they have a historical setting. So even though there's some smut in here, I don't want anything to do with it. So I'm going to get rid of these. Up next, we have The Curious Charms of Arthur Pepper by Fedrea Patrick. I put this one on my These Books with Self-Destruct in 12 Months video, and I still have a little bit more time before that video is up, but I just don't see myself ever getting to this one. I don't tend to gravitate towards regular contemporary fiction. It's just not my cup of tea when it comes to reading. I do read some of them, and there are some that I have on my shelves that I'm still very much interested in, but this one just doesn't happen to be one of them. I remember reading the synopsis when I put it on in that list for that video, thinking that it sounded really, really good, but since then I haven't thought of it, so I don't think I need to keep it. And it goes for all of the books that I'm unhauling that I have not read. If I ever want to go back to them, there's audiobooks, there's ebooks. I don't have to keep them physically. So um, if there's any books that you see here that you think I absolutely need to give a try and I haven't read it yet, feel free to let me know. I might pick it up in one of those other formats, but I just don't see the need to keep them physically. Up next, we have The Host by Stephanie Meyer. This is a book that I put on my shelves thinking, oh my gosh, I... I think I was actually right during my reread of Twilight. I'm like, yeah, I need to read more Stephanie Meyer, obviously. No, I don't. Uh, I remember watching the movie and I heard the book is actually much, much better than the movie, but I just don't care enough to read it. I'm not a big sci-fi girly anyways, so I don't see myself reading this Chunky Beast just for the heck of it. The only other Stephanie Meyer book that I'm keeping on my shelf is Midnight Sun because at some point I want to get through that one, but this one just isn't one that catches my attention. Then we have The Art of Racing in the Rain. This is one that I am going back and forth on because I've heard such really good things about this book, but I, again, I just don't get pulled to adult contemporary fiction um, very often unless it has, I don't know, something extra intriguing to it. And even though this is about a cute dog and I heard this is one of the like better dog stories, it's not a super sad dog story, I just don't see myself ever getting to it. So I am going to let this one go. Then we have The List by Saban Vivian. This is one that I picked up at the bookstore. It was used and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll read that. I was buying a lot of YA Contemporary at the time and I was reading a lot more YA Contemporary at the time, but it's just not something that I see myself picking up anytime soon. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't care. 
Then we have Coconut Lawyer Cake Murders by Joanne Fluke. This is actually an ARC that I picked up at the bookstore because we couldn't sell them. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll give it a try. I'm not going to read this. I don't reach for mysteries to begin with. And I don't think that cozy mysteries would be the ones that I would reach for if I did try to pick them up. So I'm going to let this one go. Even though I've heard that there's really cute, um, what's it called? Uh, recipes in the back. I just not interested. Then we have Salvaged by Madeline Rowe. I decided to unhaul this book during one of my TBR bingos because I didn't want to take a punishment for it and I didn't want to roll it over so I ended up unhauling it. This is another arc. It is an adult sci-fi. Definitely gives me the Expanse series vibes with like the um, virus that's going around but I don't know. I just don't read sci-fi very often and this is not something that compels me to pick it up so I'm gonna let it go. Up next we have You by Caroline Kepnes. Same thing goes for this one. I decided to unhaul it during a TBR bingo because I didn't want to take a punishment. And this is just one, I don't even know why I bought it. I tried to watch the TV show and it gave me major, major anxiety. So I don't know why I thought that reading the book would be any different. I didn't try it. I'm not going to try it. Uh, this is one that I don't think I'll ever be convinced to read. It's just not for me. Here's another book that I got rid of during a video. And that was my um, TBR rewatch that I do once a year and I go through and kind of tally the books that I'm still interested in and this is one that I decided I just don't have any interest in reading. I've heard really really good things about the series. I have heard really good things about the tv show but I just don't see myself ever picking up this big beast and this is a very very long series. All the books are just as chunky as this one and I just don't want to push through a series like that. I've heard good things but I just don't think I'm gonna read it. Then we have another arc and that is The Summer Deal by Jill Shalvis. Like I said I picked up a lot of arcs during my time working at the bookstore because we couldn't sell them and I just figured you know it's free. Might as well just take it. That's not the mindset I should be thinking when I have so many other TBR books on my shelves that I do actually want to read. So another one that I'm going to be letting go. Uh, this is the same author of the Perfect Chemistry series, Simone Eccles' uh, Better Than Perfect. If I'm not going to read those ones, I'm definitely not going to read this one. So no need to keep it. Then we have The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. This is actually one that I got rid of because I've heard such terrible reviews about this book. Clint, um, I don't know if he read it and didn't like it. I think he did read it and didn't like it. I think Mel also didn't like it. Um, and I've heard really just terrible things about it. So I'm not going to read it. Then we have The Fill-In Boyfriend by Casey West. Again, another YA contemporary that I just don't see myself reading. Same goes for Eleanor and Park. This is one that I wanted to read because I wanted to, I don't know, be on the Rainbow Rowell bandwagon, but I just don't see myself ever reading it. I just decided I'm also going to get rid of Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. This is a really beautiful special edition, but I just don't see myself ever reaching for it. Then we have The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is another one that I think I decided to unhaul during that TBR video. Just not something that I see myself ever picking up. Um, I'm not a huge horror reader to begin with and this just I don't know it just doesn't work for me I don't know I want to love it but it just doesn't this is also another arc so don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this one but getting it off my shelves indeed then we have another book that's on my these books will self-destruct in 12 months video and that is a master plan for rescue again another one that I just don't see myself reading it is historical fiction I'm not a historical fiction reader so I don't see myself reading this one I think there's one more book in this series that I'm supposed to unhaul but I don't know where it is I think I owned book two and three in this series and I believe these yeah, these are like a billionaire father situation, not billionaire father, billionaire um, boyfriend situation, but I just didn't feel like buying the first book just so I could read these ones. I'm gonna have to find the other book on my shelves, but I am getting rid of both of these. Up next we have Because You Are Mine and Because We Belong by Beth Carey. Uh, because You Are Mine is the first book, but I believe Because You Belong is the third book, and I just didn't care enough to buy the, the second book to get to the third book. And if I was going to start the series, I didn't want to have to buy another one. So I decided to get rid of it altogether. And the last three books that I have not read are the um, Rules of Dating series by Anne-Marie Meyer. I've had these ones for a really, really long time. Again, ones that I picked up used. Um, and I just don't see myself ever getting to these ones. I think they're cute. They're short if you want something short, but I don't want to read them. Let's talk about my one crossover book. And that is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and the... Girl Who Played With Fire. I have read The Girl With The Dragon Tattoo. I DNF'd it. Hence, I have not read this one, but I am getting rid of it. Um, I have no interest in trying this series again. I've heard so many good things. I know there's a lot of people that absolutely love this series. I am not one of them. Next up, we have You Had Me At Ola by Alexis Daria. This is one that I read in January. I didn't end up posting a January wrap-up, but if you want to hear any of my thoughts about any of the books that I've read so far this year, you can always check out my Goodreads. I am now doing full reviews for every book that I read, but this is just one that did not work for me. I didn't love the main character. I didn't love the uh, conflict between the two characters. I didn't love the secrecy that was happening between them, and the characters just felt really immature, and I just... I wasn't a fan, so I'm getting rid of this one. 
Up next, we have another DNF, and that is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos. This book just didn't work for me. I got about 60 pages in and realized that I had zero interest in the characters, the plot, the story, the romance, any of it, so I decided to let it go. This is one that I'm getting, giving up because I have a duplicate copy of this one. This is an arc that I picked up um, at the bookstore at one point, and then I read this one and decided that I wanted to get matching covers to the rest of my series, so I ended up picking up the first book used at the bookstore um, and decided to let this one go. Again, it's an arc, so I'm not going to sell it or anything, but... I gotta get rid of it. Then we have Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. I did read the first book and will continue on with this series as a reread, but I don't see myself keeping the books after I'm done rereading them, so I'm going to get rid of this book. Then we have One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. This is a book that I hate the more that I think about it, <laughs> honestly. I really hated the ending of this book. It felt like a huge cop-out. I really enjoyed the first like 75% of the way through it, and then we got to the end and I realized who did it, and I was like, no, I'm out, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. Then we have To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristeau. This is a book that I just don't see myself ever rereading again. It was a solid three-star book. I really liked the retelling aspect of it, but it's just not one that I will reread. Same thing goes for The Boyfriend Project by Farrah Rojan. I liked it. It was a three-star read. I will read more from this author in the future. I did actually buy the second book in this series, but I just don't need to keep it. Then we have I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. I really liked this book. I liked the fact that we had a non-binary character represented as the main character of this book. However, I just don't see myself rereading it. I will definitely read more by this author in the future, but I don't need to keep this on my shelf. And I think that somebody else can really benefit from reading this one instead of me keeping it on my shelf and never rereading it. Same goes for Upside of Unrequited. Again, this is an LGBTQI plus story that I enjoyed. I think it's cute. It's a three-star read. Uh, the only book in this series that I'm going to keep after reading is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda because I really like that one, but I don't need to keep this one. Then we have Head Over Heels by Hannah Ornstein. This is a book that I've kept on my shelves for so long because I read it in 2020 and I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was a really cute gymnastic style romance. I was a gymnast growing up and so reading books about gymnastics is always super fun to me. However, I have not thought about this book since I read it. That just means that I'm never going to reread it, so I don't need to keep it on my shelves either. Then we have Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is one that I thought that I was definitely going to reread at some point, but looking at it on my shelves, I don't think I'm ever going to be inclined to pick it back up and do a reread. I thought that it was a fun thriller, paranormal thriller. I thought that it was a good time while reading it, but I don't see myself ever rereading it, although I would recommend it for those that like this type of story. Then we have Set Fire to the Gods by Kristen Simmons and Sarah Rosh. Um, this is, was a three-star read for me. I didn't love it um and I don't see myself ever continuing on with this series so I don't need to keep it on my shelves then we have Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon this is one that again I thought about keeping on my shelves but only because I really like the cover and this is like the, the new printings this new special editions but I don't need to keep it I'm never going to reread it I don't think I'm going to continue on with this series so why keep it this is one that I borrowed from a family member so I'm actually going to be giving it back but I did also DNF this one so no reason for me to keep it I didn't DNF it because I didn't like the concept of the story or not the story, but the concept of the message behind this book, but I just didn't like the writing style. So I DNF it. Then we have The Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I like this book. I think that it's a very good historically set thriller type book, but I just don't see myself ever rereading it. And I don't think that I would continue to purchase the rest of the books in the series, even though they do have like really cool pictures in here throughout the story. I listened to this on audiobook. I liked the audiobook narration, so I probably, if I get to the rest of the series, I will listen to them that way. Uh, then we have A Little Life by Hanya Gahara. <laughs> I never finished this one. I did DNF it. I can't remember where, when I DNF'd. I think I DNF'd about page almost 300. It just wasn't worth the time, effort, and agony that I was put through to read just these 200 or 300 pages, however far I got. And then I did read up a synopsis on this book and this full summary of what happens. And my God, why would you write that? I don't get it. I don't get it. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. Another DNF, we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I think I got about a hundred. Oh, my bookmark's still in here. I can tell you, I got not even a hundred pages. I got 42 pages in and I decided that it was not for me. I did not care for the writing style. I know that a lot of people love this that are readily awaiting the sequel to this book, but that is just not me. And the very last stack of books that I'm gonna talk about today, we have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. If you guys have watched my channel for a little while, you know that I did not enjoy this book. I don't think that it was fun, fresh, or exciting, and I definitely will not reread it. Then I have one that's probably gonna hurt some of your guys' feelings, and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I didn't hate this book by any means, but I didn't love it either. I think it's a fine book. I think it's well written. I think it has merit. I just didn't love it like everyone else seemed to. Then we have another book that I decided to get rid of during that um, TBR video. I did start this book. I got, let's see, to page 138. I think I got about four stories in, and I just wasn't intrigued to pick it back up again. I, I'm sad because this is a book all about diverse diversity 
and I'd love to see it. It just didn't work for me. My most hated book of the year so far, and that is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gilroy. I read it this month. You'll hear my thoughts during my wrap-up, but oof, I did not enjoy this. My second to last book we have is Fire at His Fingertips. This is a manga that I read. It was a fun manga, very, very, very steamy, but I just don't see myself rereading this book or reading on with the series, so I'm gonna let it go. And the last and final book that I'm going to unhaul today is The Right Swipe by Alicia Ray, or Rai, never figured out how to say her name. This is one that I really, really enjoyed. I thought it was really cute. I read this during Spring into reading a thon 2020, um, so obviously it made an impression if I can remember when I read it, but I just don't see myself ever picking it back up to do a reread. So I'm going to get rid of it. That is all of the books I'm going to unhaul today. It was a ton. Um, let me know if you have read any of these, what your thoughts are on them. Um, I would love to know if there's any books that you have recently let go out of your library to make space for new and fun, exciting books. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you made it to the end and you want to leave an emoji, leave the like, what is that? The emoji where the girl's going like this? I don't know. Leave that emoji because we are not about that life. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And of course, leave any comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.